We're joined in the media center by current number one qualifier and pro stock motorcycle, Eddie Cray, with 6.930 seconds at 193.57 miles an hour. You've got five number one qualifying positions thus far this season, but what does it mean to you know have that good run, you know, first thing off the trailer here at the uh, you know, largest race of the season? Well, it means everything, to tell you the truth. You know, it's it's nice to make a good lap right off the truck. I think it sets the pace for the weekend, gets you going. The most important thing, you're getting data, and uh, it doesn't put you behind. Um, when you're trying to chase the tune-up and you don't go down the track, you know, here you get five. So any opportunity to get any more than that one extra, for that one extra run, it's great. It's a good deal. Does it change your strength tomorrow at all after such a great start? Or? Well, you got to see what the weather's going to do. My, my strategy is go out there and make good runs because you got bonus points, you got everything that you can get. Um, you know, I'm fortunate enough in the position that I am, I'm, I'm really not racing to maintain, I'm, I'm racing to win. And that's the uh, that's my objective here this weekend, that's the way I'm going about it. Uh, you know, it's it's when you're racing for points and you got to maintain positions to keep going forward, you're, you always have that concern, okay, i got to get this round and i got to keep moving forward. For me, my drive is a wally at the end of the weekend and home in the U.S. Of the tracks that are left until Pomona, 
which one excites you the most and which one maybe challenges you the most? That's a tough question. They're all, yes. From here on out, they're all pretty good tracks. I, I would say uh, I have a great... Uh, I've always done well in Pomona. I don't want to jinx myself, but Pomona's sort of been, been a good race for me. Uh, I think uh, I've been in the final the last five out of six years. Uh, I think I've been in the final, uh, actually six years, six out of seven, I think I've been in the final at Pomona. And uh, I won three and runner up three. So I like that track. It's, it's always been good to me. And, you know, Dallas is the hard one because you never know what you're going to get for weather. It can be hot, humid, nasty, and sticky. Okay. Or it can be really great. So uh, we'll have to see what that brings. For you, is this also the hard one because you never won here? No, I wouldn't say it. You know, you want to win Indy. Everybody wants to win Indy. It's, it's being able to say, I won Indy. You know, that's that's cool to say I got, a, I got an Indy wallet. But, uh, you know, for, for me, uh, as I said earlier, there, there is no pressure to perform for points. There's, the only pressure is what you put on yourself. And I'm going to do what I can to get a win. That's what I want. And, uh, you know, for me, that's my drive. I'm hold the wally at the end of the weekend. Are there any other tracks out there that you're as hungry to win at as Indy? Uh, yeah, the next six. Going into the <laughs> <laughs> whatever, whatever the next six are, it's at the last part of the season for the countdown, so that's the six I want to win. I don't care about the front half of the season. Get me in there and give me a fighting chance. You know, Robert and I showed it years ago when he, when he went from the number 10 spot. I did it from the number 7 spot my first year. So as long as you're in, anything can happen. Anything can play out. So that's the way I look at it. You know, you, you, wanna, you don't want to peak in the middle of the season. You want to peak towards the end. I promise I'm done. <laughs> Back to your comment about testing. Um, the, the track prepared by one of these the, the tire dragging machines. The tire rotators. Yeah, it's so, thank you. It's so visually different from a track that's just sprayed and drug the old fashioned way. Oh, it's correct. It, 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 the way that rubber reacts when you start dragging it and doing that, it, it, I don't want to say it dries it out, but it helps pull the oil out of it and really helps give it bite. And the most important thing is it keeps it from getting slimy. And uh, it's something that you can't just simulate. The only way to simulate that is cars going down the track. And as we all know, every test session you go to, you got 10 cars or five cars or bikes. Bikes are the absolute worst thing to try and make a good track on because we got such a narrow tire, narrow group, narrow everything. Anytime you have cars going down, it really helps. So having that tire rotator, that, Larry Chris built that, I think, about seven years ago. And when Larry did that, he elevated the track preparation. If you do not have tire rotators, your facility or for your track for premier events, you're not going to bring that to the next level, and that's really what you need. And like you said, it seems almost impossible to test. Yes, it makes it very hard. And, and, and there are pro teams out there that actually have their own, you know, equipment to do it. And, uh, you know, that's the good thing about going to some tracks. And, and you pick your select few tracks where you know what you're going to get, and that's what you have. I mean, Indy, we come here, we test a couple times a year, and it's always good. There's nothing wrong with it. Um, you know, obviously, a lot of pro teams come out. But it's very hard to simulate the amount of cars. Like here in Indy, you're going to have roughly around 1,200 runs per lane before we went down it. You know, at most racetracks, you're going to have somewhere between three and 500 runs per lane. Uh, you know, Lanny with Lizzie helped us out a little bit with uh, with data and information, and we're grateful for that. And, you know, we share information back and forth with those guys over at that JFR Racing, so we have a great relationship, and uh, it's good to be a part of it.